Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today we are unboxing some new fragrances. A couple of these I purchased myself, others were sent to me complimentary, but this officially marks our first fragrance haul of 2024 and I cannot wait to dive into these. I think I'm gonna start over here. So this is a purchase I made myself towards the very end of 2024. I was starting to think about my fragrance wish list and I saw there was some sort of gift with purchase promotion at Loewe, so I jumped on it. I've been very vocal about my makeup no buy. I haven't addressed fragrances yet because I don't think I'm putting any hard and fast rules on myself this year. When it comes to purchasing new fragrances, I am incredibly picky, always have been. I think I've naturally slowed down making purchases anyway, simply because it is becoming increasingly more and more difficult for me to find something that is a standout, something that is so different and unique, unlike anything else in my collection that I have to have it. But you better believe if I'm ever out shopping and I find one of those fragrances that stops me in my tracks, something that is iconic, head-turning, show-stopping, I am absolutely going to purchase. I have Loewe 001 Woman Eau de Parfum and Loewe Air Fantasia. I also picked up a Discovery set, but I think that would be too many fragrances. I'm gonna open that in a separate video. This is not new. In fact, it's pretty old, but it's always been incredibly underrated. When I worked at Nordstrom, if you haven't been here for a long time and you don't know this, I did actually work in cosmetics at Nordstrom. I left towards the end of 2019. So it's been a long time, but when I was there, we had this fragrance along the fragrance wall, and one of my favorite things to do to kill time was to just explore different fragrances, different scents, and I would just go along the fragrance wall, and every shift I would choose something different, and I would spritz that fragrance on. A lot of times, I would spritz multiple fragrances in a single shift. This was always one of my favorites. Nobody talked about it, nobody came in asking for it, and it was sort of sadly tucked away in a corner somewhere. I always thought this smelled incredible. I would spritz it on all the time. To me, this was the quintessential sophisticated female fragrance. And then I forgot about it. And recently I stumbled upon a video, I think it was maybe a TikTok from Sheree, one of my favorite fragrance reviewers. And she talked about this fragrance again and I had to look it up. It's described as fresh and warm, inspired by morning light. And the keynotes include linen, jasmine, and musk. It's been years since I smelled this fragrance, so I'm hoping I love it as much. We'll see, I'm excited. After hearing Sheree talk about how much she loved it, I figured I would be safe. It's so beautiful. It's a warm, clean, floral fragrance. I almost smell peach. There's some sort of peachy, warm, floral quality to it. Just criminally underrated. Nobody's talking about it. I don't think enough people really know about Loewe fragrances, probably because they're a bit harder to find. I don't think you'll see them in all of the department stores but they're amazing. It seems like they're trying to grow their fragrance category. They're already in home fragrance and I think their catalog, their library is slowly starting to expand. So I imagine they are just gonna get bigger and bigger as more people find out about their fragrances. A great fall winter fragrance definitely leans more sweater weather. There's something about it that feels like being wrapped in a blanket has that smooth linen cashmere type of smell. Heavy on the musk. If you really enjoy musk forward fragrances, I think you will love this because it's very modern. It smells like a cool it girl of 2024, but very sophisticated, very refined taste. And on top of that, it's very strong and long lasting as well. I also purchased Loewe Air. I think this is a travel size. This I have not smelled yet. I was basing it off of the notes. I think I had a minimum threshold to get the gift with purchase, which is so dumb. How to go broke 101, but I really wanted that Loewe notebook. They dangled a little carrot in front of my nose and I went for it, but it sounds like this is going to be really perfect for Miami summers. Inside the box, we have the little travel spray and then there's a wooden atomizer. Oh goodness. So this is refillable. Oh, it's a weird cap. It has like a little piece of cork and then maybe it's a little bit tighter or maybe, okay. Let me not be dumb. Hold on, maybe I have to take the lid off. <laughs> Here we go. Oh my gosh. And then you put it on. Okay, so when there's a fragrance in there, it does stick. I just noticed the wooden cap on the atomizer has the Loewe logo. That's actually kind of cute. 
And the wood is really cute. I just wanted to make sure it was functional. I was freaking out for a second, but no, that's very pretty, very minimal. It's on brand. This fragrance is described as sparkling and aromatic with notes of lemon, almond blossom, and jasmine. Doesn't that just sound like vacation? And I'm always in the market for an almond fragrance. So let's see. Mm, I hope. Oh, very lemony. Let's give it a minute. It smells nice. It's just fresh and I'm getting lemon and nothing else. But lemon is one of those notes that you typically detect it at the top of the fragrance, but it dissipates and it dries down pretty quickly. I don't know if I love it. Oh, see, there we go. It's getting better. I don't love lemon. It depends. Lemon in fragrances like Sublime Vini from Creed or Devotion by Dolce & Gabbana, that's fine because it's paired and mixed in with so many other really yummy things that I love. But if it's just straightforward lemon, that's not typically my favorite. It keeps getting better and better because the lemon is getting a little lighter. Oh, see, now that's nice. Now it almost smells like a fresh aquatic type of fragrance. Very summery, very beachy. When you're going about your day, you wanna smell nice, you wanna smell pleasant, but you're just spritzing a little something on to get out the door. You just wanna smell fresh. The more I smell it, the more I like it. I'm glad I picked it up so I could try it and I'm really excited to go through the rest of the fragrances in the Discovery set. This might really surprise me, you know, as it dries down, it's starting to smell similar to a Versace Dylan Turquoise or Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. More aquatic fresh with a little citrus burst instead of in your face lemon, lemony fresh. I've been trying to bury the lead, but I cannot wait any longer. I have the new feminine fragrance from Creed right here. This was sent to me complimentary. I am incredibly grateful. It says the house of Creed is thrilled to present Queen of Silk. I did not know this was even coming. This fragrance sounds so regal, wrapped in the purple and red silk scarf. Described as floral, amber, and fruity, keynotes include osmanthus, magnolia, saffron, tuberose, passion fruit, agar wood, Japanese patchouli, vanilla, incense, myrrh, and broxen, Chinese cedar wood, and musk. I don't feel like the camera is really picking up how beautiful this bottle is. Maybe it is, I can't tell from the viewfinder. It looks just dark, but in person, it looks really purple, like a very vibrant, very royal purple. And the gold is such a beautiful compliment. And then Queen of Silk, what a beautiful name. I cannot wait to try this. Ooh, I'm gonna have to use all my strength, okay. The notes sound really good. I'm trying not to build up expectation too much, but it sounds really incredible. Like so many of my favorite things in there. And I love an amber, floral, fruity fragrance. Passion fruit is really unique. So let's see. Oh, wow. Oh, that is really pretty. Yummy. It's amazing. Okay, I'll tell you what I love about it right away is that you do not have to wait for the vanilla dry down since vanilla is listed as a base note. Sometimes vanilla, they just throw it in there just to, I think, trick people into buying it and you can barely detect it maybe towards the end. But initially right away, I'm getting vanilla, passion fruit and some sort of woody note. I don't know which one it is, but there's something that gives it a power, like a depth. So it's not just a light, delicate, fruity, floral fragrance. It's definitely more ambery, dark, moody, sexy. This is, this is gonna be my Valentine's Day fragrance. I'm calling it now. Incredible. For the launch of Carmina, I had really high expectations because I really enjoy cherry. I read cherry, I thought this is gonna be perfection. Creed does outstanding fragrances. It's not that I disliked it, but I found it to be so harsh and heavy in my nose. I actually just tried to wear it again the other day. I always kind of check in with myself. I, I think I want to love it more than I do. Not a bad fragrance, but not something that I'm excited to wear. This gives me that absolutely yes, like immediate yes. Cannot wait to wear this. Date night, special occasion. This is a queen fragrance, not a princess fragrance. I think with Creed, you can almost expect that their fragrances are going to have 
a very regal quality. They're always very luxurious smelling and this is no different. If you like fruity, if you like vanilla, if you like something that has a little oomph to it, more of a show-stopping night out on the town, makeup done, hair done, high heels, you're getting really dressed up and you want that perfect power fragrance, this is it. I can't wait to wear this and see how it dries down on the skin, how long it lasts. This feels like an instant classic. I feel like this is the type of fragrance that does have that mass appeal where anybody who smells it is going to fall in love. Amazing. Creed, you did it again. This is a masterpiece. And speaking of Valentine's Day, I received a package that looks like it would be perfect for a date night. This is the new launch from The Seven Virtues Amber Vanilla. I cannot wait for this. It came with this cute little silk eye mask, which I think is really cute for sleeping in. And then we have the little travel size, as well as a full size bottle. It says, best for evoking comfort, self-love, inspiring gratitude with sustainably sourced bergamot from Italy and upcycled sweet Santal. I'm excited. Vanilla is still having its moment, of course. And the bottle is really pretty as well. Ooh, now that is nice. Vanilla, it's an ambery vanilla. It's a little sweet, more on the sweeter side but so pretty. This is incredible. Everybody's gonna love this. I'm calling it right now. Crowd pleaser, just delectable. A really nice amber vanilla. I like that it's ambery, but it's not too heavy. It's not too, too much. And then the vanilla is perfect. It reminds me a little bit of the Kayali vanilla. And of course, Vanilla Woods is one of my all-time favorite vanillas. It's so perfect for layering. I think this would be great for layering as well, but it does smell ambery. It doesn't smell like straightforward vanilla, but it is still sort of simple in the best way possible. I've explored the brand a lot in store. I always go through and smell them when I'm at Sephora. There are a few others that I really like, but I would say this is full bottle worthy. It's gonna be one of their best. I'm not sure I'm really picking up a lot of bergamot. Maybe if I spritz it again, I will. I don't really get bergamot or santal, maybe a little sweet santal. I really just get vanilla. And then there's a kind of a caramelly amber. Very feminine, very pretty, very dainty, very light, effervescent. And this new launch just landed on my doorstep earlier today. It's from Skylar. It's called Sunkiss Dahlia. Keynotes include Dahlia, Apple, and Amber. It's supposed to be warm, floral, and romantic. Perfect timing. It's described as bold and beautiful florals kissed with the sun's embrace. Run your fingers along the tops of budding blooms as you gaze into a horizon of full of promise. And let me point out early on in the year that I did predict apple would be a really popular note this year. I figured it would make an appearance or two just because it feels like an unexplored note. This is really pretty. Wow. Okay, apple coming through. Ooh, ooh, I love it. This is really pretty. It's very apple, but yeah, it has a warmth to it. Yummy, very romantic. I would say this is a warm, fruity, floral, definitely sun-kissed. It reminds me a bit of like golden hour. Maybe it's because of the description. It sort of puts the imagery in your mind, but when you can picture it and then you smell the fragrance, it makes sense. I might like this a little better than Apple Love from Ellis Brooklyn. This is, I mean, they're very different. I think Apple Love is more fresh apple orchard, fall day, going to the farmer's market. And this is more summer date night. It is re really romantic. It smells like there has to be some vanilla in there. I'm picking up less apple now. At first, it's just apple in a really nice way because I think apple is a really fun, fruity note. Yeah, at first you would get like that crisp, almost a uh, Granny Smith, but then it becomes a little juicier, a little more floral, the fruity notes kind of dissipate and you get this really warm, dessert-like, vanilla, creamy dry down. 
I'm not terribly familiar with Dahlia. I don't think I could pinpoint it. So I'm not really sure what the Dahlia smells like, but this is probably my favorite Skylar fragrance. My husband just came home and I let him smell and he said, vanilla. First thing he said, this is from Nest New York. They sent over a really beautiful package promoting their Indian Jasmine scent, which is gorgeous. I'm sure I've smelled it in the past, but it had been a really long time. I opened this up, I had to peek. They have this limited edition, I think, floral version of the candle, which is so pretty for spring. And just look how pretty this candle is. And the scent is so nice. I cannot wait to light this and display this candle. So beautiful. You have this gorgeous green floral motif and then it says Nest New York. And this is a really good size. These are some of the best candles. It's a little sweet, it's floral. Usually I think the Nest New York candles are a little bit more minimal. I think that's the brand. Everything is a little bit more simple, but this makes a statement. I almost don't even want to light this. It's so pretty. And I'm planning to decorate for spring out in the living room. So I'll probably put this on a floral plate, maybe put a floral green arrangement, something around it. I don't know, but it just, it made me feel inspired whenever I saw this because it's really stunning. And then if I do decide to light it, they last a really long time and they heavily scent the room. And finally, I have two fragrances from Initio to talk about. These are incredible. And I would say these are my two favorites from the brand. I wasn't all that familiar with Initio, but early December, I did a deep dive and I smelled basically the entire range, I think. And these were the two standouts to me. Paragon was actually launched in 2022. I had never smelled it before. And then this one, You've probably heard about this. I think I'm just so late to the game. Addictive vibration. It is insane. It is one of the most gorgeous, sexy, amazing, show-stopping fragrances I have ever tried. And I cannot believe I didn't know the name. I didn't recognize it. I didn't remember hearing people talk about it. If they aren't, they should be, but I have a feeling they probably are and I just missed the boat. Described as unveiling a body of lustful scent and a magma of flesh and fiery blend of musk and honey, addictive vibration captivates with its heart of orange blossom and vanilla orchid. If I had to describe this fragrance in three words, it would be addicting, opulent, and sexy. It's incredible. Addicting, mouth-watering, luscious, have to have it, have to keep smelling it. It's amazing knockout fragrance showstopper it just smells like a decadent dessert you get the sweetness you get that honey if you're searching for it but unless you go into the smelling the fragrance knowing okay this has honey it just sort of blends really nicely with everything else there's just something about honey when done correctly it just takes the fragrance to the next level and it's a unique note. I usually find it in niche fragrances, not really designer fragrances. So there's something that just kind of sparks in your brain like, ooh, what's this? This is unexpected. It's a very seductive fragrance, very romantic. This would be a date night, a night out, maybe a girl's night, Valentine's Day. It's very feminine, very powerful, a bit mysterious. I absolutely love this. It's an enchanting is another great word for it. And then we have Paragon. Keynotes include bergamot, white sage, lavender, plum, palo santo, black pepper, sandalwood, and agarwood. I don't think the notes really do this fragrance justice because I remember when this fragrance launched and I remember reading the notes and thinking to myself, okay, well, if I'm out shopping and I see it, I'll definitely try to give it a sniff but I didn't instantly think to myself, oh, that's something that I have to try. You know when you're reading a description of a new fragrance and you just know that is made for you? I didn't realize it at the time, but this fragrance is made for me. It's really pretty. It's a little bit lighter. It's more daytime, I would say. Very chic, very stylish in an effortless kind of way. Just a cool girl fragrance a New York City girl, 
the musk, the palo santo, there's so many cool notes in here that I just love. The combination is incredible and it's kind of hard to describe. It's not a typical fragrance that I would wear. It definitely is unisex, but maybe leans, leans a bit feminine, I think. I'm always adding new fragrances to my collection, but I don't always feel like my collection is getting that much better because maybe I'm adding another vanilla another sweet fruity floral or another amber vanilla fragrance. And I already have so many similar options that I would wear for the same occasion. Whereas this is so different and I'm not really sure even where to display it, you know, where this fits in. I just know that I love it. I'm excited to wear it. Probably a daytime event. I think that would be the occasion I would wear this because I don't know, I feel like for date night, I have so many other options. But for a daytime event, like a fashion show or some sort of cool Miami event, this would be such a great fragrance to wear. It reminds me of having lunch at one of the nice hotels down on South Beach. If I were meeting friends for a girl's lunch, this would be the fragrance. And that completes the first fragrance haul of 2024. So many incredible fragrances. Usually when I film these videos, by the end, I have a killer headache and my nose is so overwhelmed. But I don't know, maybe I'm just high on the adrenaline of trying so many incredible fragrances. They were all winners. Everything smelled incredible. So hopefully you enjoyed hearing my thoughts. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. If you have smelled anything incredible already in 2024, don't gatekeep. Drop us a comment. We'll keep the conversation going there. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.